Hi, uh, I'm Matt Johnson and this is Roller, uh, my race to Alaska boat. Um, this is a design from Rick Willoughby, who is an Australian pedal boat designer. This is the V16 and this is the, uh, I guess, the V16 R2AK. So it's a version of one of his pedal boats. Um, basically from the water line up, everything's different and the sail rig has been added. Um, and I'm here uh, five and a half days before I'm supposed to be on the water heading towards Port Townsend. And uh, as I'll give you a tour, you'll probably see that there's uh, a bit of a mess and, uh, and a lot of work to do. My to-do list is very long. And the last couple of days has been kind of a shotgun technique of like just randomly working on little bits and not knowing which is the best priority. Uh, but this morning I was working on my rudder. So I just built a little uh, Delrin slide so that this will slide up and down nicely without the uh, bungees um, catching on the back of the rudder blade and wearing them out. There's a kick up possibility here. Good detail. Hey, tell us a little bit about why you named it uh, Ruler. Uh, well, um, I'm a cyclist first and a sailor second. And this boat is a pedal boat first and a sailboat second. Um, I wanted to bring, you know, a name that had something to do with cycling, and I've always liked that name. I've always considered myself as a cyclist to be a better roller, which basically means that I'm a, an all-round cyclist. I'm not a specialist in any one area. I'm not a sprinter or a hill climber or a time trialist, but I'm good at all those things. And I'd like to think that this boat will be good at all things. Not exceptional at any, but good at everything. Yeah. So that's the name. Sounds like a good tactic to me. Yeah. So I just threw up the uh, tent here. Uh, I, I threw it up for the first time last night. This is uh, from Tim Eden. He uh, it was a hand-me-down from one of his old boats. But this is where I'll be sleeping, under here every night. Um, I don't know if you can peek inside, but it's about 20 inches wide in there. Flares out a tiny bit. And there's, uh, there's 8 feet or so, but the pedal area is in the way, so maybe I've got 7 feet allowed to me. And uh, at night I just have to find somewhere for all my gear to go. I guess theoretically on the hiking bench. We'll see. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll sleep in there. Hopefully nice and uh, cozily. My plan is to anchor uh, stern two. Um, so that's why the this top end is up a little high for ventilation. The lower, the, the other end is all the way to the deck. Yeah. For the wind to blow over the top of. Feet will be facing the stern, right? Feet will be facing the stern. There's just a little bit of a um, spot underneath the deck where my feet can tuck in a little further. I was thinking about that the other night. So you're, you've got the dodger in the front and then the little canvas bit. Will your head be under there a little bit? Tucked no, unfortunately the dodger quite? will be, or my head won't be under the dodger. Okay. The, the pedal drive is well protected from the dodger and pretty much nothing else. Right. So out sailing or pedaling, the my feet are protected by the dodger yeah. and that's about it. Right. Keep the powertrain dry. I like that. Keep the powertrain dry, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm just uh, here working on various projects today. So that, that'll that either, this will go on your stub mast or the, the mast if you leave it up. The stub mast or the mast, if I leave it up. exactly, yeah. And this is my new stub mast. Um, determined that the last one wasn't strong enough. So now I have this ridiculously oversized Schedule 80 aluminum pipe which is the base of the mast. I'm waiting for the uh, furling drum and base piece, which should arrive today or tomorrow. Uh, again, one of these last minute changes. Um, here in the cockpit, I've been making a few changes. I just put these little blocks of wood on here for my steering lines. So one for here when I'm on the hiking bench and one here when I'm sitting in my little recumbent seat, which goes right here. Um, I just put in these little chocks so I can put my jet boil right there in front of me cook my meals. And uh, what's going to go in here? This is new too, right? Uh, yeah, that's the sole access to the to the main hull here. Um, and I've got some water jugs that I'll put in there to get them out of the way and get weight low. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, theoretically, if I ever took on some water, I can open it up and pump it out. But Right. Um, still a lot of things to do. I've got to mount this GPS here. I've got to find my uh, compass that I had the other day. Uh -huh, right. Mount it back up there where I had it. Yeah. Um, I just moved my seat location because it wasn't just right. Um, I just mounted these little P3 
pieces to attach some little baggies across the side here to, to tuck stuff into. We have that. Surprisingly, for such a little boat like this, it's been an incredibly complicated build that has taken a lot of time. Because it wasn't just building it like I had some detailed plans. It's like there's so much figuring out along the way, decide, decisions to make, mm -hmm. things to trial. I mean, like, like making the mast stub and now remaking the mast stub and building a wishbone boom that went on a stub mast and then finding out that I didn't like it and it didn't work well with the sail and having to get rid of it and mm -hmm. lots, of, lots of reworks and changes and stuff. hopefully keep the spray off me. When I'm out in chop, I have gotten a bit of waves over the deck here, and hopefully this will uh, will help that. Oh, well, you have been busy. You've made that, you shortened it. Yeah, no, it used to go all the way to here. Uh -huh. And so I cut off that chunk of aluminum and cut off the dodger. And... Yeah, I've been busy. Yes, I've been busy. It's all the, <laughs> it's this time of the build that's frustrating because you don't get any visual like, oh, look at the thing I did today. You're right. It's like all these little jobs and all this stuff, and then you're at the end of the day and you're like, I know I worked all day. It's a hell of a devil in the, the details. It devil's in the details, yeah. Well, this is nice. It, it opens up a lot more uh, places to have control lines come in. It, um, it, control lines can come in. And I really have almost no access to get to the forward deck with this dodger here. Mm -hmm. And so now I feel like it won't actually be that hard to step around it. I can step here on the cross beam and get around here yeah. using the mast to hold on to. Yeah, it's much easier yeah. than stepping from here. And let's show you guys one other part that Scott just made. These are the control arms for the canting dagger boards. So these are the can canting dagger boards in the up position. And this is the control arm painted gold. Thank you, Scott. So these go on here, and as this piece goes up and down on this rod, it controls the cant angle of the dagger board. Which I can demonstrate here in a second. Uh, previously we had these uh, as just a, a bare aluminum tube, and they were really draggy. So now with the finally having them fared. So the other end will be in here like this, right? Yep. I thought maybe I'd put a, a lee board down the side on the outside of the hull, something, you know, basic and well proven and simple. Yeah. And then he came up with his twin canting dagger boards, which they had to give it a shot. So Every, everybody's foiling. Yes, you gotta get right. on the, get on the bandwagon, right? Yes. You want to talk a little bit about how you, what the the expectation is, like how you'll use the uh, the canting dagger boards? Well, to get the best. You, to get the most out of them, I have to lift one side and drop another side every time I tack. Mm -hmm. But um, if I'm short tacking, I can leave them both down. I think Rick is suggesting I leave them at about a 45 degree angle. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a bit of work to kind of get the best performance out of it, but this is not exactly a short tacking race. I'll be on long tack, so I don't think it'll be a big deal. But yeah. It's part of the design of the boat. So these Amas are super low volume floats. They're 150 pounds of uh, buoyancy. So if I ever capsized, I can step on them, sink it, right the boat. Um, and they're a lightweight and you know, low windage too. But that should give me some lift as well. Yep, at 45, it's like half, half lateral resistance, half lift. Yeah. And then will you have them down at all when you're pedaling? I won't have them down at all. No, they'll go in the full upwards position, yeah. So clear in the water. Yeah, and Rick thinks that with the, the stoutness of the hardware with these that we put together that the the limit is about 12 knots of sailing and then after that I run the risk of starting to break some or wear out some parts mm -hmm. so um, hopefully you're looking forward to exceeding that at some point during the race mm -hmm. um, but if things get stressed you just drop drop the, the if things get stressed I could lower the rig and lower my speed or or pull the dagger boards out and go without them I guess just pedal into the wind just pedal into the wind yes yeah. That's one thing I noticed on the water is like compared to our boat with the eight frame masts, you can really get the windage down. So like it makes it more feasible, sensible, I think, to like pedal straight into it. Yeah, I mean I I think a few people have been uh, critical of the design and sort of not fully understanding it. Mm -hmm. um, thinking that I should have it be beefier and stronger in some ways, like my mast or my rigging and things like that and um, 
this is, this, I feel like this boat really doesn't compare to like a high performance trimaran. Yeah. This is like a sailing canoe, an outrigger canoe, um, low volume floats, it sailed a lot differently. And in this race, I'll do, if, if I have a strong headwind, I'll just pedal into it because I'll do much better that way. I'll take the mast down, uh, lay it on these cross beams, reduce windage as much and pedal right into it. Yeah. Or so, pat even paddle, right? Paddle. I can pedal, I can paddle, whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the idea is that this rig is not going to sustain winds over 20 knots on the on the nose. So in those cases, I just drop it down, reduce windage, and pedal. Yep. And then the advantage of the low volume float is that you could write this thing even if it was turtled. Yes, I could write the thing if it turtles. And in a in a strong gust, that certainly could happen. I found that out on the lake. I had two instances where I had to jump over to the to the Alma um, and and level the boat out. Both times is because I was had the full sail up and I wasn't fully. I I was busy uh, untangling a line or something like that. And then a gust hit me. I fell off the wind. A gust hit me, and it just pushed the boat over. Mm -hmm. So um, with the changes I've made in the sailing rig by reduced uh, getting rid of the shrouds and the wishbone boom, the sail furls. I mean, it's a piece of cake. It's just five seconds, right? Yeah, and and uh, easy on the line. It just pulls it right in. So I think now that that's going to be super safe to be that way. Because anytime I need to take myself away from being fully paying attention to sailing, I'll just pull it in, yeah. reef it, and it'll uh, it'll sit by itself while I do whatever I need to do. Then I just pull the sail back out and take off again. I don't have that risk anymore of a gust hitting me. So the hiking bench goes here. My recumbent seat lands and rests against here, um, and we've got uh, straps here to uh, tie it down to it with, and I can adjust that so I can adjust my seat back angle. Got some nice foam on here for padding. So this is a one inch XPS foam, eighth inch Luan plywood on both sides. It's wrapped in cedar on the outside, and then it has two layers of like six or eight ounce glass on both sides, and then an additional layer of the carbon fiber, a seven ounce mm -hmm. carbon fiber on the top, and it's super stiff now. It's great. I can put all my weight on it without any fear of it flexing. Uh, and when I'm in Victoria sitting on the dock for two and a half days, I'm hoping to rig this as a bit of a gang plank so I can basically just walk up it off the dock. Mm -hmm. uh, the other way that I can board this boat is that if I'm on the dock, I can just step right onto the outside of this. That's the one. That'll reach over the Almas easily. Yeah, the Almas is the Almas are about here, so there's plenty of room there. So the the cross beams started off as some uh, bent laminations that came with a kit. I bought a sailing kit that came from a row cruiser from Marty Loken, and these uh, were ones that he had made up for that. Um, they needed to be stronger for this application. So they've been wrapped in a lot of layers of glass, particularly in this area right in here where most of the, the stress happens. Um, then we had uh, XPS foam glued on both sides, wrapped in glass, and they're significantly stronger than they used to be now. Um, they also have these um, AM steel guides, guys I should say. So these come down at a 45 degree angle, which will take the flex out of them. There's just a little bit of flex left. And they're pretty bomber, especially, well, they're bomber considering they have a 150 pound displacement almas on them. Right, right. And then where do they, uh, how do they make the uh, connect to the center hull? So there's a box fore and aft of the cockpit and those just slide right in. They go to about the midpoint. There's a middle bolt and then an outer bolt here and then there's a wedge underneath it on this one. So if I needed to make an adjustment of the height, I can basically just change that wedge, remove it in and out, mm -hmm. and it'll um, it'll give a little bit of a height adjustment to it. And then the connection to the armor? The connection to the armor. So at the bottom of this armor here, there's an aluminum angle that was fiberglassed and glued and bolted and all that onto the end of the crossbeam. And that's attached to the hole with uh, aluminum plates. So there's a plate of aluminum underneath here, underneath the paint. You can't really see it, I guess. Um, it's a quarter inch thick piece of aluminum that's got a couple layers of fiberglass over it and around the hole to hold it in place. And then it has 
threads cut in it for these bolts to bolt into everything. It's the same connection for the, the pedal mast. You can almost make it out here if the lighting's good enough. But you can see that there's an aluminum plate here, mm -hmm. and then there's glass over the top of it. And then that aluminum plate's got the threads cut in it so I can bolt the, that pedal mast in place. Nice. Um, you want to say anything about the, your storage compartments? Yeah, well, yesterday I first got my first look at just how much stuff I have. Uh -huh. I thought I was packing really lightly, Yeah. but then you look at it all and even your food for a few days and realize just how much it is, and people have said, well, where are you going to put it all? Right. And I think, well, I've got plenty of storage space. What I'm worried more about is the weight, but now that I've seen it all, I actually am a little worried. Uh -huh. uh, so I've got these nice uh, seal line hatches, front and aft. There's a decent amount of storage in the front and back of the boat. Uh, the front one's not super accessible, so I'll put the stuff I don't need is often up there. Mm -hmm. And then this area here where my legs would go when I'm sleeping is where most of my gear is probably going to go. There's a couple of feet underneath here where I can put stuff, and I'll have a whole bunch of dry bags here, yeah. and then a little uh, cover over the top here so that the worst of the spray can um, shed off the top. Yep. The, the challenge, I think, is just going to be, I mean, I can put storage all the way in here, all the way up here, to just forward underneath the seat here. Okay. Uh, the challenge is then at night uh, where to put it. Um, yeah. Basically, I'll pull all those dry bags out and put them all onto the, um, the hiking bench and yes. bungee them down. Yeah, so this becomes a shelf where you can stack stuff up. Yep, this will just be covered with all my junk. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, I can pare it down to not too much. And then I'll put the awning over the top and sleep. So, with my feet down all the way underneath, my head is about right here. Not yet, quite protected from the uh, Dodger, but... Seems like uh, another backup plan might be to just have one of those little net hammocks, you know, that use those storage in boats and just string it up between the amas on the side where you don't... Chris paddle. and I were trying to figure out what the best way was to rig up a uh, temporary trampoline yeah. along the side for at night. Right. Um, a hammock or something. It would, be, it would be nice to do that, yeah. I also was joking that I could just take all my dry bags yeah. and hang them down the side like right. uh, like like fenders. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Four or five on each side here. Anything gonna go up in the, the forward one? There's a lot of storage up here, and to keep the boat balanced, I'm really gonna need to store something up here. Yeah. Um, but like I said, I think that this is just gonna be the stuff I won't be using much. So it'll be um, food storage that is like a couple of days away, um, and for weight, I mean, obviously, maybe I'll be throwing a little water up here. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, I have to, it's hard to look, I have to look at my gear right. and think, okay, well, what do I not necessarily need all the time? Yep. And some of the stuff that I don't necessarily need all the time, I want close at hand, like a, like my bag full of my warm clothes just in case I get, like, hypothermic and I need to pull that stuff out. I don't necessarily want this in inaccessible up here. Right. I want it right beside me. Yep. Uh, you want to say it, uh, anything about the rig? Yeah. So this is it right here. Uh, the lighting is in here if you can see it. So this is a uh, 550 centimeter, 100% carbon windsurfer mast. And it has an 8 meter square, which is about 85 square feet, uh, sail on it. Um, it's Basically, just like a, a Hobie Adventure Island sail, so it's a little bit of a flat top. It's got three vertical uh, battens on it. So it seems to be working really great, but I still need to figure out the main sheet. Um, I have a main sheet, and it probably will work, but uh, Rick kind of wants me to make some changes to it, mm -hmm. and I need to dry sail it over here in the driveway here later and play around with ideas and maybe make another run to fisheries to buy another block or two. Yeah. Five and a half days to the launch time and I'm still figuring things out, never sure. mind building things. So that's ah, just the yeah. way it's been. I have the fantasy that when I get to Victoria that I'm going to be going over to my favorite coffee shop and drinking lattes. Uh, but the reality is that I'm probably going to be uh, begging for tools mm -hmm. and going to machine shops and going to marine chandleries and yeah. running myself ragged because the, because some issue didn't work out properly. Yeah, hopefully it'll be an easy qualifier. Nobody, will, people won't be trying to fix stuff that broke, right? I'm I'm praying for an easy qualifier in the least because it, as a pedal boat, it would be so much fun uh -huh. to start that race off in the lead. Oh yeah, and to just you know no no breeze and just you know take off into the straits with uh, 
uh, Matthew from Lightboat and uh, mm -hmm. Colin and Rod, you know, Rod, yeah. yeah, those guys. We could just head off on our own and say, see the sailors, and yeah. maybe later the breeze would fill in and they'd pass us, but it would be fun just to lead around Point Wilson or something. Right.